Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Eric Thomas of Eric Thomas Studios, and today I'll be showing you how you can use animation layers for 3D animation. I'll be using Poser for my demo, but the concepts will be similar in most other 3D softwares as far as I'm aware. To start with, animation layers are a way of keeping really complex animations much simpler to work with. They're just like layers on an image program like Photoshop, letting you separate the information out. Using the animation that I made for this as an example, that would be having one layer for my character's overall movements back up and down, another layer for the body's motions, another for the legs, and so on. Before we can do anything, we'll need our animation palette. One way to get to this is to go into the window menu at the top of Poser and click Animation Palette. Alternatively, down in your timeline, you can click the key icon, which will do the same thing. Either way, click on the word Layers when this palette is open. By default, you'll have just one layer to work with named Base Layer. This layer can't be deleted and acts as the master track of everything. You can actually do all of your animation right in this layer, but that will make it disorganized in a hurry, or it can at least. So one thing to keep in mind is that how long this is will be how long your overall animation is. You can't change the start time from 1, but you can move the end frame higher or lower for longer or shorter animation. For reference, you can look up at the top of the palette to figure out the math on how long your animation will be. For me, it's defaulted to a frame rate, or FPS, of 30 frames in a single second of animation, which means anything animated here might look like it's spaced out a lot, but would add up to a single second when played out, which would look really weird potentially. You'll also notice that on the base layer, there will be some grayed out options on the left side. To access those, we'll need a new layer to work with. To do that, go to the part of the palette under those numbers, and in the middle, we've got a new button. Click it. There's now a layer underscore one highlighted, and the base layer is gray, and we can use all the controls there are. Just like the base, the first option here is the layer name. Clicking in there, we can rename our layer. I have a slight bit of OCD, but if you're doing a complicated animation, trust me on this, you will want to change the names. If you're making a layer just for the head turning, which is the kind of thing that layers are really good for, name it something like, say, head turn. Obviously this is dependent on how big the project is and how good your memory is, but good luck remembering the difference between layer 1 and layer 20 at a glance. The checkbox under that, include in playback, is probably what you would imagine. Checked, your animations in this layer will show up when you play the animation in the preview, and they won't if you turn the mark off. This can be a good thing for isolating parts of your animation as you go if you spot any issues but aren't quite sure where they're coming from, though the naming thing would help there too. It does only affect the preview, not the final animation though. Unlike our base layer, we can also change the start frame as well as the end frame here. This lets us set where our new animation layer will start over everything else. We can also use blend frames here. These let you blend from a full animation into the new layer or out from the layer back into the overall animation. The times here are going to set how many frames the blending will last. By default, under these, your layers will all automatically be set to Replace Composite Mode. On Replace, any rotations and translations, or Poser's way of saying X, Y, or Z movements, will overwrite any of those settings on the same character in lower layers. On the other hand, Add Mode will add all overlapping animations together. Both have their uses, but I tend to stick with Replace for the most part, since it means anything animated in lower layers won't affect the parts I'm working with in a given layer. Speaking of lower layers, just like Photoshop or After Effects, Poser has a layer stack where higher layers will show up over lower ones, if a layer is set to Replace mode. Higher layers will be the last ones to show up. So a layer on top of three layers on Replace 
would replace any overlapped settings in layers 1 and 2. If instead the same layers under layer 2, it'll replace only the content in the bottom layer, while layer 2 would now override anything in it. We've also got a few other controls at the top of the palette. The first being a circle next to the words current layer only. When this radio button's clicked, the highlighted layer will be isolated or soloed, so you're only seeing a preview of the animations in that layer. To the right and up, next to new, we can also delete a selected layer as long as it isn't the base layer. And lastly, there's the collapse all button. This will take every keyframe from all of the layers in the animation and move it all down into the base layer and delete everything except that layer. I'm planning a separate video on keyframes, but one thing about them does stand out for this. Keep in mind that the animations you apply will show up only in the active layer. In the animation palette, regardless of the tab, you can switch the active layer up at the top with the white triangle next to the word layer. This lets you make sure that you're animating the right things in the right layers. Now to show this all coming together, here's a bit more of an extended look at my example animation and how I did it using what I've gone over here. To start with, I moved the character across the screen and up in the middle of that animation to get a rough idea of the jump they're doing. That will all be its own layer. Above that, in a layer called something like Contort, I do all the rotation animation on my character's various parts to simulate first the jump, then the landing. These are things like the arms swinging up, the hands clenching, and the body contorting. They're also going to have different start and end frames with blend frames since they won't be there for the whole animation. I'll then go through and do any tweaks as needed on all the layers so it all works together better. Once I'm done with everything else, I'll then add a new layer, make sure my camera keyframes, and animate the camera so the shot's less static as the character moves. If there are any problems, I would then have everything separated out, so instead of having to sift through dozens of keyframes in one layer, things are much, much more organized and easier to tweak. With some practice, this can also make the whole animation process quicker and simpler at least for my workflow, where I like breaking big projects into a handful of smaller steps. And that was animation layers, at least as they work in Poser. I hope everyone's learned something and had fun doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment below, or with a message to at et underscore studios on Twitter. You can also like this video and share it around, I would appreciate the help getting the word out. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, including future videos on animation like this one, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.